Hi, this uh, video is about the build of a multiband DX Commander Expedition antenna. It's the first video in a series. Uh, in this video I build the antenna. In the next video uh, I'll test it and tune it. Uh, I plan to make a, a follow-on video showing it in use as well. Uh, the Expedition is a lighter, more portable version of the classic DX Commander. Uh, something you can carry in a backpack if you're going uh, portable. My, my plan is to go uh, portable uh, with a car uh, or caravan. Uh, first impressions are the quality of the build of the constituent parts um, and something uh, existing DX Commander Classic owners will be familiar with I think. Uh, the main visual difference between the two antennas is the Expedition uses uh, triangular parts in terms of ground plane and spreader plates and so on uh, and these take up to four radiated elements as opposed to the six on the Classic. Uh, there's also a hole, uh, sorry, there's a hole for three elements on the points of the triangles uh, and there's a spare fourth hole near the centre. Uh, the other difference appears to be is the pole's lighter uh, and it collapses down to a very short 27 inches or 70 centimetres in length for carrying. Um, overall it's simpler and lighter design is intended to be easier to transport, especially if you're carrying the antenna for any length of time, uh, hence I presume the Expedition branding. Um, Callum, uh, the designer and manufacturer of the antenna, provides you comprehensive build instructions on his website. Uh, you can't really go wrong if you follow these and this video is just my build process and if you like me uh, things sink in more uh, when you've been shown how to do something then then all well and good uh, the, the first thing you need to decide is which bands you want to build the expedition for uh, in this video i'm going for a 40 20 and 17 meter setup uh, and the 40 element should also give you 15 meters uh, so four bands for the price of three uh, anyway, you can always change your mind at some future point and swap out some of the wires uh, and put in other bands, 12, 10, 80 and so on. Um, there's also the fourth uh, wire option to consider, but I'm just going for three now. So this first video is the build, uh, and the second video will be the testing and tuning. Hope you enjoy. So this is the D-Expedition when it arrives, all packaged well. And just to give you an idea of how light this is going to be, it's about three and a half kilos or seven pounds eleven ounces and that's still in all the packaging so it's only going to get lighter so this is what you get inside the box uh, apologies for the wind noise it's blowing a gale at the moment so the new uh, DX10 wire two reels of that the pole inside a handy carry bag and uh, the box of bits which uh, if you've got a DX command you'll be familiar with this so in here is the spreader, the Bulgari stickers, what you do without those, and all the internals uh, in terms of uh, Jubilee clips, uh, wing nuts, bungee cord and so on. So all well packaged, next thing, putting it together. But before we start the build I thought I'd show you what's in the box, here are the contents all laid out. Now we'll start with the a bottom plate which holds the ground plane, ground plane elements and they're connected via these cable clips and these nuts and bolts. Similarly you've got the radiating plate, these are where your radiating elements uh, come up from, again bolts and cable clips. Two upper spreaders to keep your uh, radiating elements apart and tidy. Two your jubilee clips to hold the bottom of the pole together and some plastic tubing to uh, help you grip the pole, all important stickers. Uh, this is shrink tube or shrink wrap uh, for when you've got the radiating elements the correct length uh, and you're confident that's your setup and you can uh, fix with, with that. All important SO239 socket which attaches onto there and then clips onto uh, the radiating element. Lots of plastic carabiners to, to hang your radiating elements off. So they, uh, for example, a clip on here. Some paracord. Uh, and some shock cord, that's the uh, the elasticated cord to hang the elements off. So everything's in the box, uh, it's all ready to go and if, you're, uh, if you've got a DX Commander Classic uh, this is uh, all familiar territory indeed. So come inside, it's still blowing a gale outside, uh, trying to get rid of the wind noise. So you can build uh, the constituent parts of the expedition in, in a variety of orders, uh, it's, it's just personal choice. Uh, so I'm going to put these uh, bolts on the bottom of the uh, ground plane plate uh, and I just nip them up, these are all screw threaded, just nip them up with a with a spanner uh, just so they're, they're in snug uh, and put the SO239 
uh, under there. So job number one. So there you go, all five bolts are now on uh, with the SO239 socket connected. So next job is to uh, do the same on the radiating plate. You'll see there's uh, two curved sides and one straight side. That's the uh, middle point on the straight side that your coax centre is going to connect to off that SO239 flying lead. And these three, or the fourth optional as well, uh, holes are going to be um, where your radiating elements uh, come away from. So I'm just going to put the bolt into there as well. So there you go, very straightforward start uh, into the build. Uh, both plates are now uh, ready uh, to take the uh, cable connectors uh, when we get those set up. So the next step uh, that I'm going to do anyway is uh, connect up this tube in to these two Jubilee clips. So these are the two uh, clips that keep the pole uh, in place, uh, keeps one of the plates in place anyway and uh, stops the bottom of the pole collapsing. Uh, and this just gives you a little bit of extra grip on the pole. Uh, you need to take these unscrew these completely, straighten them out a bit to get them through this tubing and then uh, you'll find uh, that you can reconnect them up and it's, it makes a nice little collar uh, for the pole. So I'm going to do that now. So here we have the Jubilee clip apart uh, and we're going to try and get that tube on. Uh, so you just need to just straighten it out a bit and you can always curve it back around. And you can see there it's going to catch as you're pushing it through. So if you keep it straight just straighten up that final end and then you go through there. Now we'll mark the centre of the pipe uh, so I'm going to cut it in half uh, and then share it between the two clips. So a requisitioned kitchen scissors. Slide it on, bring it back around you can reshape this easy later on but you just need to get this this end so it fits back in so the screw can get a grip on it again so if I put in that in there just bring that tube around a bit it's in the way there it's got it and then that will grip the pole uh, nicely, just enough tackiness to to make it uh, stick. So now we'll do the other one. So there you go, both done, and they'll shape up nicely once they're in the pole. So now it's a case of um, cutting your radiating elements. Uh, there's a length of DX10 wire there, three clips. Uh, and as I said earlier, I'm going for a 40, 20, and 17 setup on this one. Um, so basically I'm going to measure this out on the kitchen floor with a steel tape making sure this is tight uh, so it isn't just a wiggly line and a random length. I'm going to cut it uh, to Callum's uh, exact measurements in the instructions and then there's always a little bit of wriggle room at the end uh, where you can adjust. Uh, and as, once I've cut these I will bear off some of this wire on the end, tin it up so it's ready to uh, be attached to this crimp I'll crimp that on and then solder uh, the already tinned end on there. Uh, so we'll do that now. And one uh, small tip, it's only temporary but remember to label your wires as you cut them because if you've got radials out as well you're going to have a lot of black wire uh, wondering what's what. Um, and I've just tinned these uh, ready to, uh, to be crimped uh, and attached to the connectors. So it's just a case of attaching a a blue radiating crimp. These are smaller than the yellow ones which are for the radials. And if I put that on there, which is a bit hard, there you go. Line it up. And that's crimped on and then you um, can just solder these on. Uh, they, they'll, they'll solder much easier because the ends have been tinned. So it's now just a case of heating up this crimp. Get all of it there. And there you go. Yeah, that's a good connection. So now I've completed the radiating elements, it's time to make the ground plane radials. 
and enough wire in the kit to make five bunches of four three and a half meter radials. So we're going to need 20 lengths of three and a half meter DX10 and each one of these clips will take four of the radials and they connect onto the bottom plate. So while the soldering iron's out and the tape measure's out, uh, now's the time to, to do all that. So after much uh, measuring on the kitchen floor, I've now got 20 radials. Here's four already tinned off. Uh, it's just a case of attaching them like we did with the, uh, the radiating elements to these clips. So that's next, uh, times five. So there we go, five bunches of four radials. Uh, so now uh, I think it's time to, to get the, uh, the pole out uh, and start offering up uh, some of these parts and start to, uh, to bring it together. So here we are back outside, uh, it's still windy. Uh, so now it's a case of uh, following Callum's instructions and adding the ground plane plate to the bottom of the antenna, sliding the uh, radiating plate down to a, a plastic collar there, holding that down with a Jubilee clip, sending another Jubilee clip down the antenna just to support a joint that is below this first spreader uh, and this is the one that takes the guys uh, so that jubilee clip is just to help with the down pressure that the uh, guys are going to cause on the pole so we'll uh, expand it out into the garden uh, and start fitting these parts so this is the expedition pole extended fully in the garden and it's uh, the 17 sections to it so now we'll fit the parts to the base First part is easy, just unscrew this base cap which also has a, a removable centre so that might be handy for a, a pole in the ground just to, to offer it up to if, when you're setting it up outside. There you go, base plate on. So you can see I've slid the radiating plate down the tube and it sits on a, a little collar there and then the uh, first jubilee clip. I noticed the radiant plate's a bit close to that uh, centre core of the feeder wire so I just need to check that as, uh, as part of the final build but uh, this is just setting it up uh, so I can get the radiating elements the correct length and tune it all uh, ready for use. So here moving up from the base is the second jubilee clip between the first and the second joint to stop that uh, collapsing under the tension of guys uh, on this middle spreader. Now this naturally sits on that joint there, it's, it's cut uh, just to fit on that uh, joint so there's, there's nothing to hold that in place other than the joint of the pole. So this is all still loose fit, you have yet to connect the radiation elements so there's the uh, bottom spreader guy and right down there you can see the uh, top spreader just connected to the game to sit on the pole at one of the joints. So now it's a case of attaching the radiator elements to that plate and uh, connecting through that middle spreader and just getting the distances right for the shock cord and the, uh, the bungee cord, the uh, elasticated cord to take some of the uh, stress out of the end. Uh, so these are just some of the uh, classic carabiner clips that you get provided with the antenna and uh, this is the uh, stretchable shock cord. Uh, the length of this shock cord needs to be determined by how far the radiating element is away from the, uh, the spreader plates uh, but uh, basically you need a, an amount, I don't know, 4 to 6 inches uh, on, a, on a longer run uh, because this will then connect to the paracord uh, which will then connect to the radiating element itself. Um, but um, potentially sometimes you need a short piece of shock cord because the element's quite close to the plate but until you uh, get to offer it up you can't really retell. Really so basically uh, just to make this one up just in case of passing the cord through the end of the base of the carabiner, tying a knot, getting it as close to the end of the elastic as you can so you don't waste any. Oop, knocking the camera. Uh, I did waste a bit there. And 
then there's just two little uh, two little holes in which this clips into. There you go. One down. And then you can see it's a case of measure and cut uh, and then attached to paracord. So you can see what I mean here. This is the end of the 17 meter element and up there is the spreader with the uh, shock cord dangling. Uh, so we need to attach this to that with a bit of paracord and just make a, a temporary loop in here for the time being. So there you go, you can see that's the 6 centimetre fall back on the 17 metre element. Uh, some paracord, which is temporarily, I've got a bit of spare there so I can move further down if need be. Paracord connected to the shock cord, there's just another knot there, temporary, and the shock cord on the carabiner. And so when this is all finally tuned, on this end uh, will be another carabiner uh, and that knot will be tightened up and made permanent. And there's still a bit of give at that end, if I just pull, you can see. So uh, once it's all tensioned up, there just needs to be a little bit of pull on that, just to keep the wire straight, but not enough that it's trying to collapse the pole. So just a little bit of, a little bit of twang. Um, so now it's a case of uh, adjusting all the other elements and just getting a snug fit before we uh, we test uh, with an antenna analyzer. So I hope you found that uh, first video useful. Uh, the next video will be setting the antenna up, uh, tuning, and doing some testing.